Hello and happy Thursday. It's Thursday, June 17th, meaning it's been quite a while since I've checked in for these vlogs and that's because I haven't really done much reading if I'm honest. I guess to check in, I finished Spin the Dawn by Elizabeth Lim. I ended up putting it in my liked column. Yeah, I, just, I really enjoyed it. I was very surprised at how much I enjoyed the romance. It's a YA fantasy and I enjoyed the romance. I absolutely ate it up. Very end of the first book, I was like, wow, I am so excited for the second book. So hopefully, I think the paperback for the second book of this duology just got released. So I might go and pick that up if it's available locally. I really liked it. I enjoy it. If you're looking to read it, I really recommend try to keep in mind that the Project Runway-esque trial is not the entire book. Don't expect the entire book to be about that trial. I think you should go into it being excited for this idea of magic and fashion and the power of the gods and all of this magical awesome stuff. Um, that is very exciting and also a romance that isn't totally cringy, has precedence, and the love interest, the male love interest, is kind of adorable. Like, I know he can piss some people off, but I liked him, especially in the context that he's in. And then I picked up Lore, sorry, I <laughs> don't have the dust jacket on, but I picked up Lore by Alexander Bracken, and I'm about, I think I finished like this very first part where they introduce kind of what's going on, but honestly, I've kind of been avoiding this because I'm not really hooked or enjoying it quite yet and we're almost 200 pages in so I'm like, you know, okay, so the premise of lore is that every seven years there's this, I don't want to say trial, but there's this like window of opportunity for people of a certain bloodline to kill the Greek gods and essentially ascend to goddom and gain their powers. A lot has been said, at the same time not a lot has been said if that makes sense. Like I just, I've read 150 pages and I feel like there's not a lot that I can tell you but at the same time there is stuff to tell you but I'm still wondering like what the hell is the point of everything I've been told so far. I'm just not motivated, I'm not really interested, I'm not you know sucked in quite yet so I haven't read a lot of things involving the Greek gods in a while. I think The Lovely War was the last thing I read that has, you know, references or uses Greek mythology in the text itself. And I don't know, I think I've just lost my interest in it, honestly. I used to love Greek mythology, but I'm starting to think that maybe now I'm phased out and that's kind of hindering my enjoyment of lore, which sucks because I own the hardback copy. Yeah, I've made that progress on lore. I'm 150 pages into lore. As for the Archon of Peace, I did not keep up with my 100 pages a day challenge that I gave myself. I very much behind on that. In fact, since I last checked in on Friday when I had hit the 200 page mark, I've only read 150 pages. My enjoyment is starting to go down a little bit, which is unfortunate because as you guys know, I really want to love this book. It's by a Filipino author and it's indie pub. It is an 800 page book and with an 800 page book, I feel like I talked about this in my last vlog, there has to be merit to that 800 pages. And while I feel like there is some merit, there is lots of things going on, there's often too much going on, too much being introduced, too much all at once. And I understand that this is a huge world, this is a huge series, but in the first 300 pages, I shit you not, I have taken so many notes, so many notes, and all of this is relevant. I don't know, I feel like that hasn't really happened for me before. Usually um, I take maybe half a page notes just to orient myself and then once I've written down those notes I can remember everything. But for this, I have to write down notes because someone is going to get introduced and they're going to quickly be introduced and there's not going to be a lot of exposition. But they'll be used later, like their powers or something about them will be used later and they will be, they will be mentioned and you will be wondering, okay, who the fuck is this? And you have to go back to your notes to figure out who the fuck it is. So sometimes I just open the book and I get overwhelmed because I know in the coming chapter something new is going to be introduced and I am either going to get super overwhelmed by it or I'm going to be interested by it. It's kind of hit or miss. I think I'm supposed to be on page 700 by now, given my 100 page a day challenge for myself so today i have some chores to do and after i do those chores i am going to jump in and hunker down with this boy and read as much as possible 
because I just I want to be finally know what what all of this is culminating to in this first book. Next week I am starting a part-time gig doing research in an area that I actually like doing research in so I'm not gonna have as much time to read so I would really like to get this done before then. One last I guess bookish check-in. I want to start an audiobook while I'm doing those chores and that audiobook is Shine by Jessica Jung. I'm going to be buddy reading this with Veronica from Moon and Coffee Books and Justine from Miranda Monologues. All of our buddy reads before have been very dark and heavy. So like we read um, My Dark Vanessa, we kind of buddy read The Dragon of Jin Sang. And those are like really heavy dark books. So we wanted to go for something fun and we're all, you know, low-key K-pop fans. So I'm excited. I'm going to start the audiobook today while I'm working. My other reading plans, once I finish Archon of Peace and once I finish Lore, for the rest of the month, the only books that I really have planned are The Silent Patient and The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. I would just really like to get those books off of my goddamn TBR shelf because like my, my interest in reading them waxes and wanes. Yeah, I'm ready to just finish those books, have them off my TBR shelf. That's all I have for you guys today. I have my caramel macchiato. I'm gonna pop in my AirPods and get to work. I'll check in with you guys when I have more stuff to say. Hi, okay, I know this is like the same exact spot I was just talking to you in, but it's about 1.30. Finally figured out what the point of the book is. So, we are following a lot of characters. But the two main characters are Dash and Windsor, they're brothers, and essentially they're reincarnations of things that I don't quite understand quite yet. But they're reincarnations and their very existence might trigger a prophecy that would kind of just reset the world and bring it back into balance. This world is ruled by Archons, and Archons are these human-like gods that are also not quite gods. They have powers and are obviously more powerful than humans but can still be killed. And so they are in fear of Dash and Windsor who are the renegade and the elementalist respectively. What's really tripping me up <laughs> for some reason is that the Archons are not the end-all be-all of this weird god system. So there's humans, there's Archons, there's ancients, and then there's still gods. So we've got a very complicated multiple tier system and it gets even more complicated because the gods have never been seen, they're not really talked about and they've been briefly mentioned a few times but they're not of any importance right now I guess. The ancients are all dead or extinct, the archons have kind of either locked up or wiped out all of the ancients which is kind of like in Greek mythology when all of the Olympians took out the Titan, but the Titans were just imprisoned, I believe. So I think I think it's similar to that. There are also ancients who are getting freed, and then the Archons are just going pew pew pew. So much going on. There's also all this stuff with a kingdom who's like the evil stepmom has, you know, done away with Cinderella and has taken over the kingdom and there's witches, oh yeah, there's witches who are actually the only true immortals, and oh my god, you guys, it's just so much. The more I read, the more it starts to make sense, but also the more it gets revealed, so I get even more confused. So I'm hoping that at some point the rate of confusion is, it starts to go down, and the rate of understanding goes up so that they're, you know, opposites because I just am lost. I'm totally fucking lost. Alright, just a quick, while well, I'm thinking this check-in, almost 500 pages in. So the way that this book is written, it's very dialogue heavy, but there are times, I don't know if it's a cause of the typeset or just the way it's written, but it's kind of hard to tell who's talking and when. And I think that's leading to a lot of my confusion because I'm not quite sure who knows what or what's being told to who sometimes. Yeah, I'm still struggling, y'all. Many hours later. Okay, hello. We're going to ignore the fact that I'm sweaty because it's summer and I live in the tropics. But I finished the Archon of Peace. And I'm so glad I'm finished. <laughs> okay, 
this is a stupid like first world problem for sure like I'm very very lucky to be able to have gotten the physical copy of this book but it's it's a chunky boy the paper is not like a light regular paper weight for books and it's also almost 800 pages so it's heavy and it's not fun to hold I, I had it on my desk I had a pillow on my lap when I was reading it earlier so like yeah, I'm just glad to be done with that just as a reminder I rate books zero for not for me one for I liked it but two for I liked it just I liked it and then three for I loved it it's one of my favorite books of all time I gave the Archon of Peace a one which roughly translates to like a 3 or 3.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads, for example. I don't really use Goodreads, but that's what it would be. I think it has a lot of redeeming qualities, and it's definitely like a very expansive world that this author has built that has very complex and intricate political relationships and all of these power dynamics and magic systems and everything that's going on. However, what I found myself thinking at the very end of this one book was it could be a really good trilogy if there were things that were more fleshed out, so the non-dialogue parts, like some of the action scenes, some of the characters thinking to themselves and whatnot. I think that, you know, if you'd fleshed that out and made it into three different books, this would have been a really fantastic trilogy. Not to say that this book isn't good, but I could see it being expanded into a trilogy, just this one book, and doing really well. So the, some of the complaints that I had earlier pretty much stayed. The there's a lot of confusion with how some of the dialogue is written. I never know sometimes when people are talking or... There is both third person and first person point of view. And the first person point of view stays on one character, but sometimes there's third person used to refer to that first person character, so it gets a little confusing in that as well. In the third act, there's a lot, a lot of new information added there were a couple of info dumps and I was like, oh no, <laughs> like my brain is like full steam ahead trying to get through this but I'm not making a lot of progress because I'm so stuck on all this new information that's being compounded onto like the mountain of information I already have. I think people who are fans of high fantasy with really wide ranges of characters and very complex multiple magic systems and these relationships between species and peoples and kingdoms that goes back thousands and billions of whatever years. I think if you are interested in that kind of fantasy then this will tickle you pickle. I mean I ended up taking about three full pages of notes and then a little bit I sort of gave up around the uh, 600 page mark but I mean that just goes to show you how much there is in the book. This is a very incredibly well thought out world with so many different things that this author has put a lot of time and effort into crafting and I definitely applaud him for that. It's just as a reader who is new to this world who doesn't live in the author's head and like really understand what he's thinking, it was a little hard sometimes to keep track of everything and to grasp what was happening in every single situation. Like I said, this book has its pros and its cons. It's not a bad book by any means. I think that has a lot of potential. I would be interested in reading the rest of the series if I'm honest. The way the first book left off was satisfying but it still had enough of a cliffhanger that made me want to pick up the book that is mentioned at the very end of the book that's going to be the sequel that I think is releasing next month. I That's it. That's <laughs> I'm sorry, I just really wanted to finish this book today. I really want to finish the books for an year because I want to get to books that I'm a little more hyped about. Like I was really excited for this book. And then all of the other books that I currently have on my TBR that I mentioned earlier, I'm not particularly looking forward to. I would just like to get them off my TBR, which doesn't help. And I honestly should not own these books at this point if that's how I feel about them. But I've learned my lesson. I'm going to really try to just buy books as I have interest in them and then read them immediately after purchasing them from now on. Since this is a reading vlog and I am reading other things. I also started Shine by Jessica Jones. I'll show the book cover here again. I'm 18% in, listening to the audiobook. It's not bad. The audiobook, I think, is definitely the way to go, just because from what I'm hearing from Justine and Veronica, the writing isn't fantastic, which is, you know, to be expected. Jessica Jung is, she owns a fashion brand and she was a K-pop idol. I by no means expect her to be a fantastic writer. So I think the audiobook is 
fun in that it feels kind of like, like a TV show almost. Already, she has touched on some things that I really appreciated. Uh, she talked about a little bit about some of like the Asian American experience where we face these really weird daily microaggressions that don't seem outright blatantly racist and you don't really know how to call them out but you experience them and they make you feel icky and you want to just scream. So I really appreciate that. I want to know, I just wish I knew how autobiographical this was because there's something's being said about certain people. I just want to know, I want to know the tea, you know? I don't know if this reading vlog is going to continue past this, but that is my current progress on Shine. I'm finished with the Archon piece, so yay! <laughs> Hello, it's Editing Mari, and it's Saturday now. I originally was going to include more in this reading vlog, but upon editing, I see that I have more than enough content for one video. So I'm just going to put all of my art kind of piece thoughts in one video and share it with you guys. The only thing I have left for you is some cool videos of North Shore Oahu, which is where we went this morning on a little drive. So yeah, please enjoy. Thank you guys for tuning in. I will see you next time. Bye!